Asus released Rogue Rapture GTA C5300 back in 2017, and at that time it was the fastest Wi-Fi 5 router in the market. Fast forward 2020, it has been 3 years and the market is flooded with Wi-Fi 6 routers and even Asus has released its new GTA X11000 Wi-Fi 6 router which is basically a replacement of GTA C5300. And recently we have reviewed it, so if you haven't checked out the review, I will leave the link in the description below. But today we are going to find out either GTA C5300 is still worth it in 2020, and especially with internet speed reaching 1 gigabit per second. So in this review we will do Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test, so please sit back, relax and enjoy the review. First let's do a quick unboxing and see its contents. The unit came with some quick start guides, Asus Rogue Wi-Fi router, power adapter and an ethernet cable. Now let's look at the specs. The Rogue Rapture GTA C5300 is a 4x4 tri-band 802.11ac router powered by 1.8GHz quad-core CPU, 1GB of RAM, 256GB of flash memory. It uses 1024 QAM technology to achieve maximum speed up to 1000 megabits per second on 2.4 GHz band and up to 2167 megabits per second on each of 5 GHz bands. Also, it supports all of the latest 802.11ac technologies including MU-MIMO and beamforming. In the connection options, router has 8 1 gig LAN ports and port 1 and 2 can be used for gaming and port 5 and 6 can be used for link aggregation and a 1 gig WAN port for internet, 2 USB 3 ports and a power button. There are 3 buttons on the left side of the router that allows you to toggle Wi-Fi connection on and off, connect devices via VPS and LED and on the front of the router you have status LED indicator lights for all the connections. Let's talk about the design and features. The ASUS Rogue Rapture GTA C5300 resembles the new GTA X11000 Wi-Fi 6 router. The overall body dimensions are huge, measuring 2.4 inch tall, 9.5 inch wide, without antennas and weighs 3.8 pounds. The router has a lot of ventilations on the top and bottom to keep the powerful hardware temperature under control. The ASUS GTA C5300 Wi-Fi 5 router is configured for maximum performance and coverage up to 5000 square feet. That's perfect for many modern homes, even on the larger side of things. So this Wi-Fi system is looking great for families, small offices or apartments. So it's a great system for multi-story houses. Now let's do some performance coverage and speed test. So we placed the ASUS GTA C5300 Wi-Fi router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test we are using MacBook Pro setup as iPerf 3 server and second MacBook Pro with 802.11 AC card and Dell laptop with Intel X200 Wi-Fi 6 card installed. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floors of the house to see how well ASUS router performs in terms of speed and coverage. In this test we will use fast.com which is powered by Netflix to perform internet speed test and iperf 3 performance test. So let's get started. Okay so here as you can see on the screen we have 3 Wi-Fi bands all set up separately. 2.4 GHz band is called Batman, 5 GHz-1 band is called Superman and 5 GHz-2 band is called Wonder Woman. Both 5 GHz channels are set to 80 MHz bandwidth. Few things I want to mention here that ASUS GTA C5300 does not support 160 MHz bandwidth. Also using Intel's AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card, the maximum Wi-Fi speed I was able to connect was 867 megabits per second. No matter what settings I use, I tried to manually change the Wi-Fi 6 card setting to only connect to 802.11ac standard, but no luck. But when I use Wi-Fi 5 card, which is 802.11ac on my MacBook Pro, I was able to connect up to 1.3 gigabits per second. So either there's a Wi-Fi 6 compatibility problem, but I could not figure this out. So something to keep in mind, if you have Wi-Fi 6 card or Wi-Fi 6 device, it might limit your Wi-Fi connection speed. And for reference I'm using firmware 3.0.04.384.81686. So I have 1 gig Verizon Fios connection speed. And for the first test I connected a 2019 MacBook Pro to the router via Ethernet cable and we are getting close to 1 gig internet speed, confirming router can handle 1 gig internet speed. And I will use our both laptops with Wi-Fi 5 card and Wi-Fi 6 card as iPerf 3 clients to perform Wi-Fi speed and coverage test. So if you're not familiar with iPerf, here's a quick information about it. iPerf 3 is a tool for active measurements of the maximum achievable bandwidth on IP networks. 
So for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I'm standing 5 feet away from the Wi-Fi router. And as you can see on the screen, we have 1.3 gigabits per second Wi-Fi connection speed on MacBook Pro, which has 802.11ac Wi-Fi card. We are going to use Fast.com internet speed test, which is powered by Netflix. And as you can see on the screen, we are able to achieve 370 megabits per second wireless speed. And standing at the same spot, let's test the iPerf 3 speed test as well. And as you can see, we are getting close to 301 megabits per second iPerf speed results. Now we are going to switch to Dell laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card installed and perform internet speed test and iPerf 3 speed test as well. As you can see, Wi-Fi 6 card is connected with 867 megabits per second Wi-Fi speed. And running internet speed test, we are getting close to 460 megabits per second internet Wi-Fi speed. And running iPerf 3 test, we are getting close to 401 megabits per second Wi-Fi speed. So Wi-Fi 6 card or devices will definitely benefit faster speed. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router and the laptops. I have so far a good Wi-Fi connection for both laptops. So using MacBook Pro with Wi-Fi 5 card using Fast.com internet speed test, you're still getting 320 megabits per second wireless speed. And for the iPerf 3 test, we are getting 104 megabits per second wireless speed. Now we're going to switch to Dell laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card and perform internet speed test and iPerf 3 test. So as you can see, Wi-Fi 6 card is connected with 867 megabits per second Wi-Fi speed. And internet speed test produced 420 megabits per second internet Wi-Fi speed. And running iPerf 3 test, we are getting 387 megabits per second wireless speed. Now I am moved to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi router with the floor and few walls in between the router and laptops. Here Wi-Fi 5 card has only few Wi-Fi signal bars. So using MacBook Pro with Wi-Fi 5 card using Fast.com internet speed test, we are getting close to 320 megabits per second wireless speed. And for the iPerf 3 test, we are getting 66 megabits per second wireless speed. Now we are going to switch to Dell laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card and perform internet speed and iPerf test. As you can see, Wi-Fi 6 card is still connected with better Wi-Fi signals. And using internet speed test, we are getting close to 340 megabits per second wireless speed. And running iPerf 3 test, we are getting 180 megabits per second wireless speed. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi router with the floor and few walls in between the router and laptops. I still have a good Wi-Fi connection for both laptops. So using MacBook Pro with Wi-Fi 5 card using internet speed test, we are getting 330 megabits per second wireless speed. And for iPerf 3 test, we are getting 89 megabits per second wireless speed. Now we are going to switch to Dell laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card and perform internet speed and iPerf 3 test. As you can see, Wi-Fi 6 card is still connected with full Wi-Fi signals and using internet speed test, we are getting 390 megabits per second internet speed and running iPerf 3 test, we are getting 299 megabits per second wireless speed. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls between the Wi-Fi router and laptops. So using MacBook Pro with Wi-Fi 5 card, using internet speed test, we are getting 380 megabits per second wireless speed. And for iPerf 3 test, we are getting 294 megabits per second wireless speed. Now we are going to switch to Dell laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card and perform internet speed and iPerf 3 test. As you can see, Wi-Fi 6 card is still connected with full Wi-Fi signals and using internet speed test, we are getting 380 megabits per second internet wireless speed and running iPerf 3 test, we are getting 382 megabits per second wireless speed. Now we are going to do a Wi-Fi file transfer speed test. In this test, we have both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 laptops close to 15 feet away from the Wi-Fi router. In the first test, we are using Wi-Fi 5 laptop and connected to 5 GHz dash 2 channel named Wonder Woman and we are connected at 1.3 gigabits per second speed. Now we are going to transfer close to 6 GB of file over Wi-Fi. In the transfer, we are getting an average between 35 to 40 megabytes per second transfer speed, which is kind of disappointing considering we are connected at 1.3 gigabits per second wireless speed. Now for the second test, we are going to use Wi-Fi 6 laptop and connect to the same 5 gigahertz dash 2 band called Wonder Woman. And Wi-Fi 6 card is connected at 867 megabits per second wireless speed. So let's transfer the same 6GB file over Wi-Fi again. So as you can see on the screen, we're getting a solid average of 80 megabytes per second transfer speed. So even though Wi-Fi 6 laptop was connected at low speed as compared to Wi-Fi 5 laptop, it still was able to transfer at higher transfer speeds. 
I just want to mention that both laptops had SSD hard drives, so read and write speed was not the limiting factor in this test. So now let's talk about the router setup. Asus designed the Wi-Fi router setup to be a very easy three-step process. All you have to do is download the Asus router app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem, or if you have Fios with Ethernet connection, you can connect router's WAN port directly to your Ethernet cable, and you don't need modem. Then just follow the instructions in the app to complete the setup, or you can set up using your web browser. The web setup has a very clean interface with tons of options to choose. So we are going to go over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. On the main screen, we have mesh information, internet information, wireless settings with router information, number of connected devices, network traffic information. Then continue down the left column, there's an AI protection service, allow you to set up network protection and parental controls. Then under the game acceleration option, you can set QoS and WT fast settings. Then you have open NAT, game radar, Wi-Fi radar, VPN settings, traffic analyzer. Then under advanced settings, you have network map, with internet connection information, number of connected clients, then also information about wireless channels and router CPU RAM status information. Moving on to wireless settings, here you can set up wireless settings for all three bands. Either you can combine them into a single SSID or keep them separate. Here you can also set up WPS, WDS, wireless MAC filter, radius settings and more. You can also set up guest network, set up local LAN settings, then under WAN settings, you can set up internet connection settings, port trigger, virtual server, port forwarding, DMZ, DDNS, and NAT settings. Then under USB application settings, you have a lot more options to choose from and configure USB attached device and network share storage and more. Followed by that, you have AI Cloud 2 settings. It allows you to connect to your data wherever and whenever you have internet connection, links to your home network and online storage. Asus Rogue Rapture also supports Alexa and IFTTT devices. There are options for IPv6, firewall, administration settings options, system logs, and some network tools. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default, or you can use Asus app to complete the whole process quite fast. Overall, Asus Rogue Rapture GTAC 5300 Wi-Fi 5 router did perform very well in this review. The GTAC 5300 Wi-Fi router delivers good Wi-Fi coverage, excellent Wi-Fi speeds, and can handle 1 gig FIOS speed and will not have a problem covering 5000 square feet. ASUS has definitely listened to the customers and fixed firmware issues and it improved Wi-Fi speed as well. On that basis, I have no problem recommending ASUS Rogue Rapture GTAC 5300 Wi-Fi router to anyone who is in the market for new router and don't have Wi-Fi 6 devices. But if you do have Wi-Fi 6 devices, I would highly recommend to choose Wi-Fi 6 router because you will be able to benefit from all the latest Wi-Fi 6 features and speed. Let me know what you guys think of Asus Rogue Rapture Wi-Fi router in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.